Beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. I hope this video gets finds you in good health and strength, power, peace, love, and a sound mind. Thank you for your beautiful comments and your suggestions. I'm taking some into consideration. Well, beautiful people, this lesson God had me put together. It took me a while. It took me a couple days to put this one together. And this is about the keys of knowledge. The carnal man, the carnal mind. The natural man, the spiritual man right and why it'll show you why people have a god complex <clears throat> and why people don't believe in god because when you're taught in school you're taught carnally you're you have a carnal mind you're you're taught things that are carnal right and you're not taught things that are spiritual and then the natural man like you're not even taught natural history in school that's why people don't know about the phoenix bird because the natural history of birds right the bird of paradise the phoenix that's in natural history so i just with that being said we're going to talk about the keys of knowledge the carnal man the carnal mind the natural man the natural mind to be carnally minded we know you're it's is is you're spiritually dead so what why why this is why people have a god complex and have a hard time even believing that there's a god right so luke 11 and 52 woe unto you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge you enter not into yourselves and them that were entering in you hindered right so what did they hinder them from because you're only taught carnally so you're not taught spiritually or natural history so your mind only works one way, right? Now, Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 84, verse 19 to 22. And this greater priesthood administers the gospel and holds the key of the mysteries of the kingdom. So there's keys of the mystery of the kingdom, even the key of the knowledge of God. Then you have the key of the knowledge of God. And in your King James Bible, it talks to you about the key of David, right? And I... In the book of Isaiah and in Revelations and then it also talks to you about the key of the kingdom of heaven right but the key of knowledge and then what does God tell you about knowledge he says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they're only taught carnally they only have carnal knowledge they don't have natural knowledge or spiritual knowledge right therefore in the ordinances there thereof the power of godliness is manifest when is the power of godliness manifest when you have the keys of the mysteries of the kingdom and even the key of the knowledge of god and without the ordinances thereof so if you don't have the ordinances and the authority of the priesthood the power of godliness is not made manifest unto men in the flesh because they don't have the knowledge of it my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. For without this, no man can see the face of God, even the Father, and live. Now, the earthly and the spiritual. Now, Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 128, verse 14. How bet that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. So Adam was earthly, made out of the earth. Christ came down from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as are the records on the earth in relation to your dead, which are truly made out, so also are the records in heaven. Remember, he made the heavens and earth. There's beings in heaven, beings on earth. Those that are earthly, those that are heavenly. This thereof is the sealing and binding power. And in one sense of the word, the keys of the kingdom. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that what he gave to his apostles, which consists in the key of knowledge. And now, my dearly beloved brethren and sister, let me assure you that these are the principles in relation to the dead and the living that cannot be lightly passed over as pertaining to our salvation. 
for their salvation is necessary and essential to our salvation. As Paul says concerning the fathers, that they without us cannot be made perfect, neither can we without our dead being made perfect. Now, the first book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is sown a natural body. So you know you got there's a natural body. It is raised in a spiritual body. So a natural body, your spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Mosiah chapter 3 verse 19. For the natural man is an enemy to God and hit and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and puts off the natural man and becomes a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord and becomes as a child submissive meek humble patient full of love willing to submit to all things which the Lord sees fit to inflict upon it even as a child does submit to his father now the, the book of John chapter 3 verse 31 he that comes from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth he that comes from heaven is above all John chapter 3 verse 12 if I have told you earthly things and you believe not how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things so you understand it's how their mind works because what you're taught what you know if you're earthly you're gonna know about earthly things what do you gonna know about heaven unless God teaches you that that's why they say the spiritual man is mad the prophet is a fool because they're speaking of heavenly things and spiritual things and people are not taught that they're taught carnally right so a lot of people have a God complex because of that because of their teaching now I'm going to read the book of John chapter 1 verse 19 to 19 when Christ was among the Pharisees and Nicodemus because this is going to graft into when somebody's coming at you with their earthly speaking, their earthly talk and your spiritual. Right? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Christ by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou does except God be with him. Christ answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? <laughs> right? Because he's born already, right? He said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born Christ answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I marvel not that I said unto thee you must be born again the wind blows where it lists and thou hearest the sound thereof but cannot but canst not tell whence it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? He had a hard time grasping what Christ was saying to him because he's earthly. He wasn't spiritually minded, and to be carnally minded is dead. Christ answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? and knows not these things so how are you ruler of these people and you don't know these things Christ asked him a question now it, verily verily I say unto thee we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness if I told you earthly things and you believe not how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things and no man has ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whatsoever believes that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, Doctrine and Covenants chapter 29 verse 41, Wherefore I, the Lord God, caused that he should be cast out from the garden of Eden, Adam, from my presence because of his transgression, wherein he became spiritually dead, which is the first death, even that same death which is the last death, which is spiritual, which can be pronounced upon the wicked when I shall say, Depart ye curse. Moses, the book of Moses, chapter 5, verse 14. And Satan came among them, saying, I am also a son of God. And he commanded them, saying, Believe it not, and you believe it not. And they loved Satan more than God. And men began to began from that time for it to be carnal, sensual, and devilish. Moses, chapter 6, verse 49. Behold, Satan has come among the children of men and tempted them to worship him. And men have become carnal, sensual, and devilish and are shut out from the presence of God. Mosiah chapter 16, verse 3. For they are carnal and devilish, and the devil has power over them. Yet yeah, even that old serpent that did beguile our first parents, Adam and Eve, which was the cause of their fall, which was the cause of all ma which was the cause of all mankind becoming carnal sensual devilish knowing evil from good subjecting themselves to the devil Romans 6 Romans chapter 8 verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so what happened what does satan do to the people he, they became carnally minded. They became carnal, sensual, devilish, knowing good from evil, the tree of good and evil, subjecting themselves to the devil. That's why they, do, they don't learn about God. They believe in magic, right? The magical world of Disney, the, right? But that's, that's spiritual. That's spiritual wickedness. So if you believe in witches and you believe in magic, you should believe in God because he said, suffer not a witch to live because they're doing spiritual wickedness. But you're not taught like that. For the To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, James, the book of James chapter 3, verse 15. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Doctrine and Covenants 20 and 20. But by the transgression of these holy laws, man became sensual and devilish and, and became fallen men. Moses chapter 27, I mean Mosiah, forgive me, Mosiah chapter 27 verse 25. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yeah, men and women, all nations, all nations, men and women, all nations. So all people you see, every color that God made, every nation of people that you see God made. God said, marvel not that at that at that all mankind, yeah, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again, yeah, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God becoming his sons and his daughters. Alma chapter 41 verse 11. And now my son, all men that are in the state of nature. This is the state of nature. We're talking about the natural, the carnal, and the spiritual. And now my son, all men that are in the state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without God in the world. And they have gone contrary contrary to the nature of God. Therefore, they are in a state of contrary to the nature of happiness. They don't know true happiness at all. They find it in things and people when happiness is within yourself. 
doctrine in Covenants chapter 67 and verse 12. Neither can any natural man abide in the presence of God, neither after the carnal mind. So your carnal mind won't allow you to go in the presence of God. It even will make you not even believe there is a God. So let me read this again. Neither can any natural man abide in the presence of God, neither after the carnal mind. Mosiah chapter 16 verse 5. But remember that he that persists in his own carnal nature and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion. Remember rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And the, 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 they believe in witchcraft but they don't believe in God. And that is spiritual wickedness. So that's to show you they're carnally minded. That carnal mind has made them ignorant and has made them spiritually dead. But remember that he that persists in his own carnal nature and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion against God remains in his fallen state. And the devil has power over him. Who The devil has power over people who are rebellious. The devil has power over people who witch. Therefore he that is therefore he that is as though there was no re redemption made being an enemy to God so these people out walk around like there's no redemption like they can't be redeemed by God being an enemy to God and also is the devil an enemy to God oh let me read that to God them operating the way they operate in their fallen state in their sin and their rebellious ways they become an enemy to God and also is the devil an enemy to God. Alma chapter 22 verse 13. And Aaron, you know the Moses' brother Aaron. So and Aaron did expound unto them, unto him the scriptures from the creation of Adam. Laying the fall of man before him and their carnal state. And also the plan of redemption which was prepared from the foundations of the world. Through Christ for all whosoever would believe on his name Alma, the book of Alma chapter 36 verse 4 and I wouldn't and I would not that you think that I know of myself not of the temporal but of the spiritual this is temporary but the spiritual is eternal but he said not of the temporal but of the spiritual not of the carnal mind but of God the second book of Nephi, chapter 9, verse 39. Oh, my beloved brethren, remember the awfulness and transgression against the holy God and also the awfulness of yielding to the enticings of the cunning one. Remember, to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. And it's not just life eternal, it's life and peace. In the book of Romans, it tells you that, right? So let me read that again. Remember. So you remember this. Remember to be carnally minded is death. And to be spiritually minded is life eternal. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 3 verse 4. For although a man may have many revelations and have power to do many mighty works. Yet if he boasts in his own strength and set at not the counsel of God that follows after the dictates of his own will and carnal desires. He must fall and incur the vengeance of a just God upon him. That's why Christ died for our sins. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 67 verse 10. And again, verily I say unto you, that it is your privilege and a promise I give unto you that have been ordained unto this ministry, that in as, in, in as much as you strip yourselves from jealousy, jealousy and envy is the robbery of happiness, is the robbery of love, Okay, when you're jealous and when you're envious, you rob yourself of happiness, you rob yourself of joy, you rob yourself of peace, you rob yourself of love. Okay, that is jealousy is a sickness and so is envy. You're great, believe that. You shouldn't be jealous of anyone. Everybody's made different, everybody walks in their own lane. Envious, you shouldn't be that. Everybody's made differently. You should not compare yourself to another. Inasmuch as you strip yourselves from jealousy and fears, fear has torment. And humble yourself before me, 
for you are not sufficiently humble. The veil shall be rent, and you shall see me and know that I am, not with the carnal, neither natural mind, but with the spiritual. So you got to strip yourself from being jealous and fearful and humble yourself before God. You won't get God being with them jealousy, jealous over your family, jealous over your neighbor, jealous over your people, jealous over your co-worker. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not at all. And fearful and unbelieving. Humble yourself. Get rid of jealousy and envy. That is a robbery of your blessings. That is a robbery of your peace and your happiness and your peace of mind. Because a jealous hair, here is everything. A jealous ear is always trying to hear about the person they're jealous about and doing a whole bunch of sinister evil things. Devilish. As the Bible, as the word says, devilish. So, and in as much as you strip yourselves from jealousies and fears and humble yourselves before me, for you are not sufficiently humble, the veil shall be rent and you shall see me and know that I am not with the carnal, neither natural mind, but with the spiritual. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 29 verse 35. Behold, I gave unto him that he should be an agent unto himself. And I gave unto him commandment, but no temporal commandment gave I unto him. For my commandments are spiritual. They are not natural, nor temporal, neither carnal, carnal nor, nor sensual. Two. Now, now I'm going to read Hosea before I read two, Peter chapter twelve, chapter two, verse twelve. Hosea chapter nine, verse seven. The visit, the days of visitation are come, the days of recompense, are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. This is what they say. The carnal mind of a person says the prophet is a fool. Those the natural man and the carnal man, the earthly man, says the prophet is a fool. And they say the spiritual man and the spiritual woman, they're mad. For the multitude of thy iniquities and the, and the great hatred. Why? Because what does it say? They walk about in their iniquity, right? And 2 Peter confirms how they are with their natural behavior, their natural thinking. The second book of Peter chapter 2 verse 12. But these are natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. They speak evil of spiritual things because they don't understand them. They don't have the knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge and, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Let me read that again. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. What do they say? They say the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man and the spiritual woman, they say they're mad for the multitude of their iniquities because they became what? Carnal and sensual, like the devil made them. Talks about the iniquities. Let me go back up. Give me a second, beautiful people. It's the fall of man. Oh, beloved brethren, remember the awful, the awfulness and transgression. No, this is not the scripture I want. Well, at, at the bottom is to the enticing of the cunning one. Remember to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. But I'm looking for this other scripture that I passed over. Give me one second. Now, yeah, Alma chapter 41, verse 11. And now, my son, all men that are in the state of nature, or I would say in a, car in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without God in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of God. Therefore, they are in the state contrary to the nature of happiness. Neither can any natural man abide in the presence of God, neither after the carnal mind. 
And then it goes on to say, let's read this again. He that persists in his own carnal nature and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion against God remains in his fallen state. And the devil has all power over him. Therefore, he is as though there was no redemption made, being an enemy to God and also is the enemy and, and also is the devil an enemy to God. You see that? Now, the brute beasts, they speak evil of things they don't know. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things they understand not and shall perish. And then it talks about their iniquity when we went, they have bonds of iniquity on them. They say, is the, the, the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thy iniquities because of their iniquities and their great hatred. Now, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. So we don't speak in the words man's wisdom teaches because man's wisdom teaches carnally. Right? But which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual and and chapter the first book of Corinthians 2 and 15 but that he that is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is judged of no man 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God so what the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him they're foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spirit they are spiritually discerned they don't have any spiritual discernment remember the natural man he receives not the things of the spirit of god because to him is foolishness that's why they say the prophet is a fool right the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad because they lack the knowledge of spiritual things. They speak evil of things that they, they, they don't understand. And they'll utterly perish in their corruption. Mosiah chapter 3 verse 18 to 21. For behold, he judges and his judgment is just. You know, we serve a just God. And the infant perishes, not that dies in his infancy, but men drink damnation to their own souls, except they humble themselves and become as little children and believe that salvation was and is and is to come in, the, in and through the atoning blood of Christ, the Lord omnipotent. For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam. And will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and puts off the natural man and becomes a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord. And becomes as a child submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord sees fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father. And moreover, I say unto you that the time shall come when the knowledge of a savior shall spread throughout every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And behold, when that time comes, none shall be found blameless before God, except it be little children, only through repentance and faith on the name of the Lord God, omnipotent. So we had to become like little children and we had to repent. We have to repent Anybody who's not teaching you repentance is not saving your is not teaching you the right way about God. You must repent. It says repent or perish. Even people who are carnally minded, they can repent from that. They got to get spiritually minded, right? Because they can't stand in the presence of God. They're an enemy to God. They think it's foolishness. Cuz remember to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. But what and when you're in, you're in your carnal state you're in a fallen state 
And when you're in a carnal nature, you go about in sin and rebellion against God. And you remain in your fallen state and the devil has power over you. Neither can any natural man abide the presence of God. Neither after the carnal mind. So this is what God wanted to teach you, beautiful people. I hope you learned something this day. So this is about the key of knowledge. The knowledge that people are supposed to have, right? But they're only taught one way, so they only think one way. But don't forget, there is a natural body. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20, first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 44. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And the, the keys of knowledge, this is the keys of knowledge that Christ is talking about. Woe unto them. Because the people have not been taught right. So the keys of knowledge. This is unlocking the mysteries of the kingdom to you with me teaching this. He said, woe unto you lawyers. For you have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not into yourselves. And them that were entering you hindered. This is the knowledge people are supposed to know. Right? This is the keys of knowledge. The keys of the kingdom which consists in the key of knowledge. These are principle for your salvation. If you're just taught carnally, and it says put off, this is what Adam's fall. This is Adam's fall. For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam. So if you're just caught naturally and carnally, how will you be? You're, you're an enemy to God because you're not thinking spiritually. You're not operating like how God wants you to operate. For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and put off the natural man. And I'm going to stop that right there, beautiful people of God. And I hope you learned something. Stay blessed. Be spiritually minded, for that's peace and love. That is peace and love. As, as it says in Romans chapter 8 and 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Stay blessed. Happy Sabbath.